In the tense aftermath of the conflict between Israel and Hamas, the United States has unveiled its strategic trump card, the awe-inspiring USS Gerald Ford, a colossal giant of the seas. As this maritime titan sets sail into the eastern Mediterranean, the world watches in suspense. With the ability to project immense power, it embodies the nation's commitment to peace and safeguarding civilians. The USS Gerald Ford, an unparalleled symbol of strength, and the next-generation aircraft carrier with unprecedented capabilities, is en route to the hot zone, signaling a new era of naval power. The heightened tension in the region has captured the world's attention, with global powers like Russia and China anxiously awaiting the outcome of the U.S. deployment. All eyes are on this pivotal moment as the world watches and holds its breath to see what unfolds. What would the deployment of this colossal titan mark? Can the USS Gerald Ford make a difference in this high-stakes international chess match? Join us as we tour with the U.S.'s most advanced aircraft carrier that has been deployed to the Middle East. The military conflict between Israel and Hamas, led by Palestinian militant groups, erupted on October 7, 2023. The conflict initiated with a surprise rocket barrage launched from the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip into Israel, totaling over 3,000 rockets that killed an estimated 1,300 Israelis. In response to this attack, Israel swiftly launched a counteroffensive and formally declared war against Hamas the following day. Following the clearance of Hamas forces from affected areas, Israel launched airstrikes in the Gaza Strip. As of October 14th, these airstrikes have resulted in the loss of over 2,215 Palestinian lives. The United Nations reported that roughly one million Palestinians, nearly half of Gaza's population, have been displaced internally. Concerns over a humanitarian crisis escalated when Israel severed the supply of food, water, electricity, and fuel to Gaza, which Egypt and Israel already blockaded. Israel ordered the evacuation of 1.1 million Gazans, while Hamas urged residents to remain in their homes. The conflict has witnessed a tragic loss of civilian lives and allegations of war crimes involving all major participants. It also triggered international protests. The conflict between Israel and Hamas is not new, with intermittent wars occurring since 2006. Historical grievances exist on both sides, contributing to the conflict. In 2022 and most of 2023, Hamas appeared to be discreetly preparing for its major offensive, Operation Al-Aqsa Flood, instead of engaging in significant confrontations with Israel. The international response to the conflict has been diverse. At least 44 countries have denounced Hamas and labeled its actions as terrorism. Meanwhile, several Middle Eastern countries called for de-escalation, attributing the root cause of the conflict to Israel's decades-long occupation of Palestinian territories. Many Arab states have also called for de-escalation. A separate conflict was reported between militants in Lebanon, including Hezbollah and Israeli forces, on October 8 and 9. In response to the situation, the United Kingdom announced its intent to send warships and aircraft, and Germany initiated the supply of military aid. In response to the complex and ongoing conflict, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has ordered the USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group to the Eastern Mediterranean, prepared to assist in the situation. This deployment was accompanied by cruisers and destroyers, demonstrating American preparedness for various scenarios, including surveillance and potential interdiction of weapon shipments to the region. Preliminary reports suggest that 27 American citizens have been confirmed dead with some missing and unaccounted for. The U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem actively monitors and assesses the situation, striving to ensure the safety and well-being of American citizens affected by the crisis. Diplomatic efforts, led by Secretary of State Antony Blinken, are ongoing to facilitate dialogue and emphasize the pressing need for de-escalation. The U.S. coordinates with regional allies and partners to seek a peaceful resolution, Simultaneously, international organizations are actively advocating for a ceasefire and the protection of civilians. In the U.S. House, a bipartisan resolution is being prepared to address the ongoing conflict, emphasizing the importance of a peaceful resolution and protecting civilians. 
The international community remains committed to finding a diplomatic solution, providing humanitarian assistance, and working to alleviate the suffering of those affected by the ongoing crisis. The Eastern Mediterranean Sea, encompassing areas near Greece, Turkey, Cyprus, and the Levant, holds great historical importance. For millennia, it has been a crossroads for trade, cultures, and empires. These waters have a rich historical context of naval power, beginning with ancient maritime civilizations such as the Minoans, Phoenicians, and Greeks. These early seafaring peoples established trade networks engaged in naval warfare and influenced history through maritime activities. The region's geography, with its numerous islands and access to the Black Sea, has always made it a strategic crossroads for naval powers. Historically, naval power in the eastern Mediterranean has been shaped by colonial ambitions, empire building, and the emergence of modern nation-states. With its formidable navy, the Ottoman Empire controlled the region for centuries. The decline of the Ottoman Empire and the establishment of new nation-states in the early 20th century altered the geopolitical landscape. The two world wars in the 20th century profoundly impacted naval operations in the eastern Mediterranean. During World War I, the Ottoman Empire aligned with the Central Powers, leading to naval confrontations with the Allied Powers. The Gallipoli Campaign, which involved a naval invasion of the Dardanelles, is one of the most iconic military operations in the region's history. World War II saw further naval engagements, with the Mediterranean serving as a crucial theater of operations. The British Royal Navy and other Allied navies faced off against the Axis powers in naval battles and campaigns. The strategic importance of the Mediterranean as a gateway to Europe from the Middle East and North Africa made it a hotly contested theater. The Cold War introduced new dynamics as the United States and the Soviet Union vied for influence in the Eastern Mediterranean. The U.S. Sixth Fleet maintained a presence in the region to counter Soviet expansionism and ensure the security of NATO allies. The U.S. Navy's aircraft carriers were central to these strategic calculations. The strategic significance of the Eastern Mediterranean Sea has remained strong over time. It still has a unique geostrategic location. This strategic positioning remains a critical hub for international trade, energy transportation, and political influence. The proximity to three continents places the region at the forefront of global interests and necessitates a robust naval presence. One of the defining features of the Eastern Mediterranean is its abundance of energy resources, particularly substantial natural gas reserves within the Eastern Mediterranean Basin. Exploiting these resources has become a focal point of geopolitical competition, sparking tensions and disputes among countries seeking to safeguard their economic interests. As a result, naval assets play a pivotal role in ensuring the region's security and protection of energy infrastructure. Political instability has been a recurring challenge in the eastern Mediterranean, marked by conflicts in Syria and Libya. These conflicts have introduced a range of security challenges and uncertainties. Aircraft carriers and military ships provide a flexible and versatile platform for responding to crises, conducting humanitarian operations, and supporting regional stability. The Eastern Mediterranean's proximity to conflict areas further underscores the strategic significance of aircraft carriers. The ongoing Syrian civil war has created a volatile environment with multiple state and non-state actors involved. The maritime dimension of the conflict involves the transport of arms, fighters, and supplies to and from Syria. Aircraft carriers enhance the region's security and readiness to respond to contingencies arising from nearby conflict zones. These key factors and other regional dynamics underscore the critical role of military ships and aircraft carriers in the eastern Mediterranean. Aircraft carriers are the most prominent symbols of naval power projection. These massive warships have various aircraft, including fighter jets, reconnaissance planes, helicopters, and support aircraft. They offer several strategic advantages. They are capable of extending a nation's influence far beyond its shores by functioning as mobile airbases. Their flexibility is crucial, allowing for rapid responses to dynamic situations. They are often part of carrier strike groups, enhancing their capabilities by including cruisers, destroyers, and submarines. Furthermore, aircraft carriers play a humanitarian role, as they can be deployed for disaster relief 
providing medical assistance and logistical support during crises. While the Eastern Mediterranean is not known for piracy or maritime terrorism like some other regions, the risk still exists, necessitating vigilance. Greek-Turkish standoffs add another layer of complexity, as historical tensions between the two NATO members occasionally result in naval confrontations. Refugee and migration crises require military ships involvement in search and rescue operations, border control, and humanitarian missions. Effective diplomatic coordination is essential in this complex region, involving multiple countries, international organizations like NATO, and regional actors. The presence of aircraft carriers and naval assets in the eastern Mediterranean calls for careful consideration of resource allocation, as the cost of deploying and maintaining these assets must be managed effectively. The region's evolving security dynamics necessitate adaptability and flexibility. Encouraging regional cooperation and confidence-building measures, including protocols for encounters at sea, can contribute to stability. Operational challenges, including logistics, readiness, intelligence and surveillance, diplomatic coordination, multinational operations, cybersecurity, maintenance and adaptability, are critical for the region's aircraft carriers and military ships. Several key aircraft carriers have played significant roles in various operations and missions in the eastern Mediterranean, shaping the region's security landscape. The USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, a formidable Nimitz-class aircraft carrier of the United States Navy, has been a frequent presence in the eastern Mediterranean. This carrier has been actively engaged in various operations, often providing critical support to coalition efforts in the Middle East. Its strategic presence has reinforced the United States' regional influence and contributed to regional stability. Another notable Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, the USS George H. W. Bush, has been deployed to the eastern Mediterranean on multiple occasions. This carrier's missions extend beyond traditional military operations and include tasks related to maritime security and maintaining regional stability. Moreover, it has actively participated in joint exercises with NATO allies, strengthening regional international partnerships and security. The Royal Navy's pride, the HMS Queen Elizabeth, leads the Queen Elizabeth-class carriers and has been deployed to the Eastern Mediterranean as part of its global presence. These deployments underscore the United Kingdom's commitment to international security and collaborative efforts. Working in coordination with NATO allies and regional partners, HMS Queen Elizabeth plays a vital role in enhancing the security landscape of the Eastern Mediterranean. France, too, has made substantial contributions to the Eastern Mediterranean's security. The French Navy, with its powerful aircraft carriers like the Charles de Gaulle, has conducted deployments that support a wide range of missions. These include counterterrorism efforts, regional stability, and collaboration with international partners, reflecting France's dedication to ensuring regional security. The USS Gerald Ford is en route to the Eastern Mediterranean, where it will play a pivotal role in addressing the ongoing conflict between Hamas and Israel. The journey of the USS Gerald R. Ford began in September 2008, when the U.S. Navy entered into a significant $5.1 billion contract with Northrop Grumman Shipbuilding in Newport News, Virginia, setting the stage for the carrier's design and construction. An earlier $2.7 billion contract from 2005 kick-started preliminary construction. Construction unfolded at the Huntington Ingalls Newport News Shipbuilding facilities in Virginia, with a symbolic keel-laying moment on November 14, 2009, led by Susan Ford Bales, daughter of President Gerald R. Ford, who honored her father's legacy. The carrier's emblem, symbolizing its identity and heritage, resulted from collaboration between the ship's sponsor and its first commanding officer, Captain John F. Meyer. Construction milestones were rapidly achieved. By August 2011, the carrier was already halfway structurally complete, reaching 75% completion by April 2012. A critical achievement on May 24, 2012, involved raising the lower bow into place, marking significant progress. By November 2012, construction was 87% structurally complete, and by December 2012, it had reached 90%. A key moment occurred on January 26, 2013, as the island, 
a prominent superstructure on the carrier's flight deck, was installed. On May 7, 2013, the final superlift was put in place, marking 100% structural completion. It was celebrated with the sealing of a time capsule containing important items on July 11, 2013. Initial plans slated the carrier for launch in July 2013 and delivery in 2015, but production setbacks led to a postponed launch in October 2013, with the naming ceremony following in November. Navy delivery was anticipated for February 2016. Notably, on October 3, 2013, the carrier's construction saw the installation of its 30-ton, 21-foot diameter bronze propellers, a meticulous process taking over 10 months. By 2013, construction costs had risen to $12.8 billion, a 22% increase from the 2008 budget, with an additional $4.7 billion for research and development. Budgetary challenges raised concerns about a potential two-year delay beyond the original 2016 completion date. In September 2015, the Navy disclosed testing delays likely extending delivery to April or May 2016, with construction reported at 93% completion. By July 2016, issues with four major flight systems further delayed the ship's combat readiness, leading to a new anticipated delivery in November 2016. At this point, construction was reported at 98%, with 88% of testing complete. By March 2018, construction costs had escalated to $13 billion due to issues with the nuclear propulsion system and munitions elevators, making the Gerald R. Ford the most expensive warship ever built. Delivery to the Navy was postponed by three months, with a new delivery date set for October 2019. The USS Gerald R. Ford marked a significant milestone when it completed its initial operational test and evaluation in April 2017. This was followed by its inaugural voyage for builders' trials, commencing on April 8, 2017, and concluding upon its return to Naval Station Norfolk on April 14, 2017. Shortly after that, the carrier embarked on acceptance trials, which took place between May 24, 2017, and May 26, 2017. In 2018, the Navy requested a postponement of shock trials for more than six years to expedite the ship's deployment. However, this request was denied. On June 18, 2021, the USS Gerald R. Ford conducted its first comprehensive shock trial off the Florida coast to evaluate its resilience under battle conditions. This involved the detonation of 40,000 pounds of TNT underwater, registered as a 3.9 magnitude earthquake by the USGS. Subsequent tests occurred in July and August, with detonations conducted closer to the hull. The vessel successfully withstood these trials, signaling their successful conclusion. What distinguishes this maritime marvel is its remarkable capacity to operate continuously for an astounding half-century on a single reserve of nuclear fuel. Its extensive capabilities encompass the accommodation of 90 aircraft, helicopters, and state-of-the-art UAVs, including the formidable F-35 Sea Fighters. However, the most striking aspect of this vessel is its sheer size. Measuring an astonishing 337 meters in length, 78 meters in width, and rising to a towering height of 76 meters, it surpasses even the grandeur of New York's Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist. To put this into perspective, it's not only longer than three football fields laid end to end, but also taller than the famous cathedral making it an awe-inspiring presence on the seas. With a weight of nearly 100,000 tons, its ability to swiftly navigate the ocean at speeds of up to 30 knots, equivalent to a hair raising 34 miles per hour, is impressive. Yet the true force propelling this colossal powerhouse is an engineering marvel. Nestled within its core are two Bechtel A1B nuclear reactors, each generating a staggering 700 megawatts of power. To provide context, this is equivalent to an astounding 952,000 horsepower, or nearly 2 million horsepower. This immense power drives the carrier's operations and capabilities, enabling it to support various aircraft, helicopters, and UAVs, including state-of-the-art fifth-generation F-35 Sea Fighters. This aircraft carrier is more than just a solitary vessel in combat. 
It is the linchpin of a broader strategic assembly called Carrier Strike Group 12. The Gerald Ford Carrier Strike Group is a formidable naval formation comprising several key components. Backing the carrier is Carrier Air Wing 8, consisting of a diverse range of squadrons, including HSC-9 Tridents, HSM-70 Spartans, VLW-124 Bear Aces, VFA-37 Ragin' Bulls, VFA-213 Black Lions, VFA-87 Golden Warriors, VFA-31 Tomcatters, VAQ-142 Grey Wolves, and VRC-40 Date-2 Rawhides. These squadrons contribute a wide array of aircraft and capabilities to bolster the combat readiness and versatility of the strike group. The strike group's potency is further augmented by including formidable surface combatants such as the USS Normandy, USS Ramage, USS McFall, and USS Thomas Hudner. These destroyers and cruisers have advanced weaponry and systems, delivering essential defensive and offensive capabilities. Collectively, these components forge a highly effective and adaptable naval force capable of executing a range of missions. This encompasses power projection, air superiority, anti-submarine warfare, and ballistic missile defense. The magnitude of these groups is staggering, with up to 9,000 personnel contributing to their operational excellence. And a significant portion of these personnel are stationed on the aircraft carrier itself. This self-sufficiency allows the strike group to operate autonomously for up to 14 days. Furthermore, it can engage targets at sea within a range of up to 575 miles while delivering devastating force onshore at distances of approximately 1,000 miles. The strike group's potential to cover extensive distances of 700 to 800 miles in a single day provides them with a tactical advantage in terms of operational surprise and the ability to swiftly deploy to strategically designated regions, solidifying their position as a formidable presence on the global stage. The deployment of the USS Gerald Ford in the Eastern Mediterranean amid the Israel-Hamas conflict is a strategic move of global significance. It signifies the United States' commitment to peace and regional stability, with the carrier's advanced capabilities serving as a deterrent against further escalation. However, the deployment carries the risk of the U.S. being seen as taking sides, potentially involving other powerful nations, and intensifying the conflict. The world is closely monitoring this development, recognizing its potential to either foster peace or trigger a more extensive international crisis. The delicate balance between deterrence and escalation is paramount in this complex and fluid situation. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.